Hello and welcome to the Watchmen on the Wall channel. This prophetic encouragement comes from Kim Potter, Dayton, Tennessee. Stop circling and enter in. Have you ever felt as if you were coming up against the same challenge or the same obstacle over and over again? Most of us have. It happens to everyone at one time or another. It even happens in Scripture. We see it in the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 2. The children of Israel had circled that same path, that same mountain, for 40 years. The time finally came when God spoke to his people. He gave them new instruction. In chapter 2, verse 3, God says, You have skirted this mountain long enough. Turn northward. Many of us have felt the frustration of fighting the same battle repeatedly, of going around and around with no sign of breakthrough in sight. Unlike the children of Israel, most of us haven't circled a mountain for 40 years. Thank God for that. Imagine how the children of Israel must have felt going around that same obstacle day after day, year after year, for 40 long years. Not too long ago, God began to speak to me about this passage of Scripture. While I was doing an in-depth study on the words wilderness and promised land, I found something quite interesting. The word wilderness is a Hebrew word. One of the meanings of this word is mouth. It comes from the root word RBD. It means declare or command or speak out. What is even more interesting is that this word or phrase promised land, it's the exact same word. Again, meaning to declare, to command, or to speak out. I found this so enlightening. Is it possible that we choose to dwell in the wilderness by the words of our mouth? If so, can we also choose to leave the wilderness, to enter into that already paid in full place where the promises of God are, and can we enter by the words of our mouth? That's our promised land. Could it be that simple? It would seem so. In 1 Corinthians 10, it tells us that the children of Israel complained continually, and because of their complaints, they were destroyed by the destroyer. Proverbs 18.21 says, Life and death are in the power of the tongue. According to Scripture, it is entirely up to us whether we partake of life or death, and it is by the words we speak. Our words, my friends, they are powerful. Most of us are faithful to pray and declare God's word over ourselves, our ministries, business, and families. It's a good thing. But what words are we declaring the rest of the day? It is easy to get caught up in conversations, and before you know it, we're saying words that are opposite of what we just prayed for. It would be so easy to listen to our body and what we feel and begin to speak our feelings instead of the truth of God's word. Perhaps you pray healing scriptures. Later that day, a headache comes your way and you get the sniffles. Do you continue to confess the word of God? Or do you say something like, I feel like I'm coming down with the flu. If you've prayed over being debt-free and you get another bill in the mail, do you keep confessing God's promises concerning your finances? Or, or do you say, I'll never get out of debt. All these bills keep coming in. Our words are so important to our victory. Not only when we are in church, around other Christians, or in prayer. They matter all the time. Personally, I'm very careful of the words that come out of my mouth. However, recently, God has shown me something else I must be aware of. You see, when I am in battle, if I'm not confessing scripture, I'm usually very quiet. I realize how easy it is to complain or confess something I don't want to see happen, especially if the battle is physical. I was thinking about this one day when God asked me this question. He said, but what are you saying to yourself? You see, we can say all the right things out of our mouth, still have doubt or unbelief in our heart. When this is the case, we will talk ourselves out of it and say something like, how many more times do I have to confess this? I prayed, I took communion a hundred times, why am I still suffering? Surely I've missed the Lord somewhere. Maybe you're saying all these things, but the Bible says those who waver will receive nothing from the Lord in James 1.6. Mark 11.23 says, For assuredly I say to you, whoever says to this mountain, be removed and cast into the sea, and does not doubt in his heart, but believes, those things he says will be done. He will have whatever he says. It's not just enough to confess the word of God. We must also believe what we say to others and to ourselves. What are you saying to yourself? What are you thinking? As a man thinks, so is he. What's in your heart? Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth shall speak. Yes, we must watch the words we speak. This is vital, of course. But we must also watch what we say to ourselves. 
if what we say to ourselves is opposite of what we confess from the word, something's wrong. In that case, we need to stay in the word of God until nothing coming out of our mouth is anything except the truth of the word of God. When we get to that place, we will enter our promised land once and for all. Lord Jesus, I thank you that you treat us with mercy. You treat us with grace. Friend, do you ever just get frustrated? Do you ever just get just get frustrated with yourself, upset, angry? Lord Jesus, why do I have to pray the same prayer? Why can't I just do it? Why can't I just be it? Like the Apostle Paul said, why do I do the things I don't want to do and I don't do the things I do want to do? Lord Jesus, I thank you, Father, that you have given us this invitation to stop circling and to enter in. Lord Jesus, in your mighty and matchless name, may it be so. May we do that today, and we declare amen.